Hello, I'm Dean Karstens, and this is Dean's N-Scale Trains. Nothing makes the layout look better than if you add lights to the building. Today I'm going to show you how I added lights to my buildings on the Conejos Valley Railroad, the small railroad that I'm building. Here are the steps I'm going to describe to show you how I added the lights to my buildings. First, you need to build a power supply to supply 5 to 12 volt uh, DC. You have to have a power distribution system to take the power from the main line to the various buildings. For each building, you had to build internal supports and then solder the lights to those supports. Add the glazing to the buildings, and then finally connect the building to the distribution center. This is the DC power supply that I use to raise and lower the voltage for the, all the buildings. It has a red and two red buttons on the top there. The left one lowers the voltage, the right one raises it. Power comes into the left connector, and it goes out to the right connector. I mounted this on just a uh, plain old um, electrical plate. This shows a support plate. The two wires coming in from the left, the white and the blue line, come from a 12 volt voltage, uh, 12 volt plug in power supply that I had sitting around. The green and the yellow lines go out on the right hand side to the buildings. And the whole thing sits inside of a blue electrical box that fastens to the bottom of one of the support boards on my layout. Light emitting, light emitting diodes or LEDs come in a variety of colors and sizes. I mostly use white for the color in this size, which is about a five millimeter LED. Or lately I've been using these miniature LEDs which fit better in buildings. And they come in packages of 100 for I think around 10 bucks. You have to limit the current for each through each LED. For that, I use dropping resistors. For 12 volts with these LEDs, you need at least 600 ohms. I use 1,000 ohms just to be on the safe side or 1K. This is a typical support that I use to, to hold my lights. This panel here primarily makes it so you can't see through the building from one window to the other side. Um, I make these out of PLA. I print them, design them and print them. You could obviously make it out of balsa wood or styrene, whatever. It's not too critical. I make them so they just fit right inside the building. Now let me show you how I solder these up. Put in each LED, situated such that it's going to light half of the building. Now the long one, the longer wire, the longer, longer lead is the positive. So I bend these down. You bring the long lead down on the left on the right here and the, this down there. Now I use wire from uh, an eight lead network cable. Gives me four different groups of two wires, different colors so I can figure out which goes where. I always standardize by using the white wire as the negative lead, so it should go to the shorter of the two LED leads.
after I solder these, I push them into the PLA, which melts. And that holds it nicely. I need to add the 1000 ohm resistor to each positive side. For that, I just put a little blob of solder. And just tack them together, making sure that they're solid. Twist these three wires together. And fuse them down into the Last PLA plastic. Okay, now comes the moment of truth. Have a power supply here with the positive lead, which happens to be yellow in this case. The green is the negative lead. Plug it in. One lights, two lights. So that checks out nicely. You notice I put in glazing material. This is a kind of a foggy paper, foggy material. There you have it. Turn the light off. Here's a breadboard that I used to connect all the wires together from the various buildings. Each of the 12 blue potentiometers controls the voltage to each individual building. By adjusting a potentiometer for a particular building, I can cut down on its power and thus its lighting. So here's a diagram of the uh, breadboard. There is a series of holes everywhere. Each group of five here, here, and so on and here, here, are connected to each other individually. There's a negative bus line up here, a positive bus line here, same thing down below, a positive bus, a negative bus. Um, all these things are used to connect everything together. The wires just stick in the holes or whatever. This is the potentiometer, a photograph of the potentiometer I used. The symbol, it's basically a variable resistance going from zero to 100K. Um, this represents where it sits on the board. It has three connections. And um, so the power comes in on the, po on the positive bus from the power supply, goes through this wire, connects down to this side of the potentiometer, comes this, this side goes to the building, and the other connection to the building goes to the negative bus. Here's an example of one of the support pieces that goes inside a building. In this case, it sits inside the hotel. Here it serves three purposes. One, it blocks the light, it blocks it so you can't see directly through the building. It holds the, the um, breadboarding system that I've put in, and it also holds the lights, which you can see at the top. And here you can see the hotel in position. 
with its support piece, its support behind it. Here's another building, the bank. You can see its support piece. Here's the final nighttime video. As always, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Dean's N Scale Trains, to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.